Let's look at some tips and tricks for working with video in Cubase. To import a video file, go to your file menu, choose import, and then select video file. We could double click on a video file and we'll get our import options dialog box where we could copy it to the project folder. We could also choose to convert to sample rate or bit depth, split channels, or if you don't want to see this dialog box, you could also choose that. Our video has been imported directly to our timeline based on our cursor position. And we see a single video track here and the digital audio file from the video file has been extracted into its own separate track. While Cubase has a single video track, you could have multiple video files within a project, just placing them at different time positions. Many times we would want to keep these two files linked, the extracted audio and the video file. So if they get accidentally adjusted, what we want to do is we could select the audio and the video file, go to the edit menu and choose to group. We could also hit control or command G. And as we move either element, we'll just automatically keep those two linked together. I'll move my video to the top and let's go ahead and move the audio file and I'll mute that temporarily. And when we look at our video thumbnail, we could see different scenes on going across the timeline. If I don't want to see the thumbnail, I could click here. But we also notice that there is an error message indicating that we have a frame rate mismatch. To resolve this, go to your project menu to project setup. We could use the get frame rate from video option and hit OK. And now we have the same frame rate in the Cubase project as we do the video. If we wanted to have a dedicated video window to watch and monitor from, we could go to our studio menu and select our video player. We could also hit the F8 key to open and close our video player. To see the video player at full screen, right click and we could just see our full screen video or we could exit our full screen video and there's other presets for sizing and aspect ratio here. We see that we have an actual time code burn in on the file itself, but if you don't have SMPTE time code burn in and want to apply that, we could go to your studio setup and go to your video display and we could say show time code and we can embed the time code in the upper left, center or right within the video file. And that's very helpful if you're working on full screen so you can see an exact reference of where that position in the video is. To navigate within the video window itself, if we see our different frames, we could actually just click and hold the mouse down and we could basically go a second forward or backward so that we could find very specific areas in the video to just get transitions aligned perfectly. Working with video also entails kind of coalescing between your bars and beats time and SMPTE frame rate. And this is where we could have two different time formats. We could have a primary and secondary time display. And we could see this in our transport bar. So we'll probably see by default in Cubase, our time set to bars and beats. And if we go to the end, if you don't see a secondary time display, just kind of go to the very end and hover the mouse, you'll see it turned to two arrows, hold the left mouse button down and drag over to the right. And now we could just toggle back and forth and say, we want to see our time code position as our secondary display. To switch which is the primary display, hit the period key on your computer keyboard. So now we could have our SMPTE display. And if we always wanted to have a time code display, we could go to your studio menu to more options and choose our time display. And as we toggle back and forth between bars and beats and our time code, we could now just see our time display automatically show those two. When we see our time display, we may notice that our minutes, seconds, and frames are lined up, but our hours are off. A lot of times you may get a video that starts at one hour. And if you want the time code position in Cubase to match that, what we could do is we're going to switch to bars and beats. I'll go to the very beginning of the project to bar one. We're going to activate snap on and off, make sure we have our grid type set to grid and to bar. 
I will now go to my project menu and we'll say set time code at cursor. And since we're an hour off, we'll say right at measure one, I want to start at one hour. We're gonna choose to not have that change. So we'll choose no for that project. And now as we play, we'll see that our video will automatically be lined up directly with the same time display that we have in the project. Now at times you may have just a bit of buffer or pre-roll in your video. So let's say if we're watching our video, the editor may give you a couple of seconds of just nothing. So let's find, let's say we were told that we have a four second pre-roll. And what I want to do is right at that moment in time, and you see that the playhead position is adjusted, I want to start right at four seconds. This is where I want measure one to be, not right here. I want it to be aligned to this very specific time. So we go to our project setup and again, shift S and I'll say we're gonna be, we have four seconds of pre-roll. So I'll go to my project start time and we'll choose four and hit okay. And now we're gonna choose yes to this prompt. And as we do this, we're gonna start right at one hour and four seconds at measure one. Now, other times you may actually not receive a pre-roll and you may want to have a pre-roll. And to do that, we could again, go to our project setup and I'll just give myself two measures of pre-roll so I could do different tempo changes. And here again, I'm just gonna say yes. And we look at our time, we'll have a minus one bar, a number zero bar, as well as measure one. And if we play, we'll see that measure one is going to start right at the same point in time at four seconds. But now since I've done that offset, if I switch directly to my time display, I can see that these aren't aligned. So let's say if I go directly on my time window to seven seconds, I'll see that we have our indications of one hour and seven seconds is one hour, 12 seconds and 14 frames. So if we wanted to make these match again, if you need to do this, we could also go into the projects up and you'll see a display time offset. So the difference in time and frames is five seconds and 14 frames. So I'll just enter that in our values here. And now we'll hit okay. And for this prompt, we'll say no. So now as we do this, our time will be perfectly aligned, whether we want to start our time position at different elements or different places, add or subtract different pre-rolls to our video. One of the things that we would want to do at this point is probably to add a marker track. So I will just add a marker track and we'll just call this for video cues. We want to make sure that we have like our markers set up and an easy way to drop markers in. On the Windows platform, you could hit the insert key on your computer keyboard and that will drop markers in by default. On the Mac platform, there isn't a insert key, so we may have to go to your key commands and just search for insert marker. And I've assigned a key just from my computer keyboard of F13. I've assigned that to insert markers. So I will just kind of watch the video now at this point. And I will just hit that key to drop in markers at different cue points that are kind of interesting. Okay, so we've dropped some markers in and what we want to do is to make sure that these markers are perfectly aligned. Sometimes, you know, if we're dealing with 30 frames a second, you may not get it exactly on the frame. So what you want to do is go to your transport menu and make sure that you have use video follows edit mode active. And once we do this, I can just simply, and I'll shut off my snap by hitting the letter J or clicking on this icon. 
and I could adjust the marker here to fall into very specific times. So I could say, I want this marker to start right after this scene or where we see, we see those mallards there. And if I want a specific number of bars between these, what we want to be able to do is to add a tempo track. Now the tempo track can affect a lot of different things based upon whether it's gonna be in musical mode or linear mode. Elements and tracks that are in musical mode will base their timing position based on the bar in beat. Elements that are in linear mode will base it based upon the SMPTE time code value. So what we could do is, and something that's not so obvious with the marker tracks, is we probably want the markers to stay exactly in the position that they are. So we probably want this marker track to be in linear mode. Now you may not see that by default, so you would probably want to go to the marker track, select it, and go to track control settings, and make sure that the toggle time base is set up. So at this point, we'll apply the toggle time base and we see this icon appear here and we want this marker track to make sure that we're in linear mode so this way as we do tempo changes these markers won't shift in time we want to make sure that our music is kind of basically just aligned directly to our different elements so let's say if i have just a really rough sketch for a soundtrack here And I wanted this to be aligned musically where I needed this entire phrase to right up to here to be exactly eight bars. So I need measure nine to end up here. So what I want to do is we'll go to what we call our time warp tool. And this will allow us to say measure nine falls right here at this particular moment in time measure one we want to fall here and as we make these adjustments it is putting in different tempo changes so that we could align our different elements so if i have a marker set here and i want it measure 15 to end right here or measure 21 we could just adjust our timing changes based on our different visual references we could also have our tracks in musical or linear mode as well. So let's say I have uh, an event here that I want it to align where it's just gonna be a quick uh, cymbal sound. So let's listen to it. And this may not make sense initially, but let's, we'll listen to it. And I wanted that cymbal sound to actually be aligned. And again, because I have the transport mode to use video falls edit mode, I could just move this event right to our scene. I'll take my snap off again by hitting the letter J. And I wanted this to be right where that cloud starts. So we'll start right here. And I want to do just a simple fade in. So now that this element will be aligned, So that will be aligned to the visual cue. So, but if I change my tempo and we look at this particular track, and if I put this into musical mode and I adjusted the tempo here beforehand, we would see that this element would not be aligned with that cloud anymore. So if I always wanted that element to be aligned to that moment in time, what I would do is again, place that into linear mode. So now as I would adjust different tempo values here, that cue, that audio would automatically align with that time code position to line up with that cloud in the video. So once again, we could place elements in time or we could place them directly to align with different visual references. So if I double click on a MIDI part, and let's say I have my snap turned off, we could also just move the start of MIDI notes 
directly to a visual reference as well. So you can see that this is going to be really helpful for just getting a particular note at a, at a scene change if you wanted to and easily have it lined up. Now, after doing a lot of work, one of the problems, the age old dilemmas of working with video is that you will eventually have an edit on a video side that's out of your control. So let's say we get a note from the video crew or director saying we cut out this particular scene. And let's say we had, you know, a number of different tempo changes. I had video information. I had MIDI. I had markers. I'll just hold down my uh, command shift or control shift on windows and I will globally select this range. So this scene has been deleted entirely from the project. And what I want to do instead of waiting for the video to be recut, I will come over here to my edit and go to range and we're going to just delete time. So what that did it was, was to delete the video, MIDI, audio, tempo, and marker information. So we'll undo that and redo. So I've just edited all the different components of the video directly there. So I don't have to wait for a particular scene change. Also, when we're dealing with video, we may get a video file that's longer than the file required for delivery. So we could set our left and right locators for the range of the video that we're working with. And as we do this, we could choose to export and we'll choose to export video. Here we could give it a name. So we'll just give it a name here. We'll choose a destination. We could add the time code. We could check our video resolution, our frame rate. And we're going to use our stereo out. And now I'm going to choose to export the video. It'll do a mix down of all the files, all the audio, all the edits that we've done. It will now embed that into the actual video file itself. We'll go to Finder or your Windows Explorer and we'll go directly to your desktop. And now here's or video that was exported. As you can see, you can do a tremendous amount of work to make sure that your music composition, your audio edits are perfectly aligned to the video in a musical, logical manner. If you have found this video helpful, please feel free to like the video and to subscribe to the channel.